Okay, hi. Uh, welcome to another episode of App Share Live. Uh, I'm joined today uh, by another host of fantastic educators from all over the world. Uh, it's always great to have uh, an international um, uh, bunch of people to sort of share their ideas and what have you with us. Uh, first up, we've got uh, Alistair with us. Uh, he's just going to say hi and what have you. Then we've got Kyle, who's joining us from uh, the United States. And we've got Pamela joining us from Northern Ireland. Uh, Rachel joining us from the Isle of Man. Sam, you're somewhere here in the UK, I believe. Uh, well, today Oxford, but normally yeah. Slough. Okay, so, yeah, cool. And then we've got Steve joining us uh, from over in Dubai. So, uh, Alice, if you'd like to uh, introduce yourself, say uh, who you are, where you're from, what you do, that sort of thing, please. Uh, yep. Uh, so, my name's Ali. I am based in Madrid, uh, currently an like integration coach. So, uh, working alongside teachers to making sure they're making use of tech in the you know, lessons uh, well. Uh, I blog at the moment. Uh, at theteachgeek.com, I've uh, been running uh, iPad programs for the last kind of three or four years, uh, but looking forward to my first app share live. Brilliant, thank you so much, uh, Alistair. Then we've got uh, Kyle joining us from the US. Good morning, how are you? Very good, thank you, welcome. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's quite an early morning here for me, it's 5 a.m., but it's good to be here. Um, I am the technology coordinator here in uh, Tuckerton Elementary School, and uh, you can follow me on, at K Calder W on Twitter. Brilliant. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, you're very welcome. And then we have uh, Pamela joining us. Morning, Pamela. Morning. Hello, I'm Pamela. I'm a primary school teacher in Belfast in Northern Ireland. I teach primary one and primary two, but I look after our iPads across the whole school. Brilliant. Cool. So uh, looking forward to hearing what you've got to share in a short while. Uh, next up, we've got Rachel. Uh, Rachel's joining us from um, at the Isle of Man. Morning, Rachel. Morning, everybody. My name's Rachel Smith, and you can follow me on Twitter at, at Mike Slutter H, and then my blog is Musings from the Island. Um, I'm a modern foreign languages teacher in a secondary school here on the island, and I'm the digital leader there as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Rachel. And then we have Sam, who's joining us from Oxford um, today. Yep. Yeah, so, um, teacher of religious studies, follow me on Twitter at Mr. McAvanagh RE. Um, interested in just using a range of apps, technology in the classroom, especially ones that just involve the teacher having the technology rather than requiring the kids to have lots of devices. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much, Sam. You're very welcome to join us. Uh, next up, we have Steve. Uh, welcome, Steve. Hey, mate. You okay? Yeah, very good. Uh, Steve Mambry, uh, I'm a head of computing at Jumeirah English Speaking School here in Dubai, uh, and I'm the founder of the iPad Educators website, www.ipadeducators.com. Uh, yeah, happy to be back. Brilliant. Yeah, great to have you back again, Steve. Uh, so, um, first up presenting today, uh, we've got Kyle. Uh, so, uh, Kyle, um, as always, uh, we sort of go for a sort of six-minute presentation. I'll give you a warning about five minutes in, and uh, then uh, that'll be your time up when you hit six minutes, but you may be a little bit quicker than that. Okay, so are you ready to go, Kyle? Yes, I am. Brilliant stuff. So, uh, to make sure everyone's on mute, please, if you could. Uh, Steve's got your mute on for me. Okay, ready, off you go. All right, so let me share my screen here. Okay, so I have a, a interest in augmented reality, if you've never heard of it. Um, so I'm just going to show a few quick apps here today. This is my, uh, my toolkit here for augmented reality, so you can screenshot that and steal any apps that you'd like. Um, my first one up is called Zoo Kazam. It's one of my favorites. It's good for primary school, and it is, um, you start off here, you can choose any animal. So let's go with mammals. The more impressive one is usually the elephant. So it's going to use my camera, hopefully. Come on. All right, let me start it over. Sorry about that. Of course, it worked last night when I tested it. Let's try Panda real quick. So what it'll do is it'll use the camera in the back of your phone, um, and then there's a target. Excuse me. There's a target. Um, it'll pull up the the target uh, the um, the animal right out of the target. It's pretty interesting. Pretty uh, the kids love it. Actually, let me pick one that I've already loaded. 
think I used a giraffe yesterday. There we go. So back of the dollar bill actually in the U.S. here is a target. So there you go. Right out of the dollar bill is the giraffe. Um, and I can spin this around. There he is. Uh, we could get really in there. Um, it works better if this is a flat. See, he doesn't shimmy there. Um, but it's really great. And then what you can do is you can actually put the dollar or you know the target in the child's hand, and then you can take the target away, and then take a picture um, with the in someone's hand. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, it, it really the the faces that you get, um, the awe is um, it's it's brilliant. Um, let me go back to that. Sorry. So then, if you hit this target here. You'll get, um, you can't hear it because of the audio, but you'll actually get almost a rich uh, David Attenborough readover that'll tell you that the life cycle, the size and the weight, and the habitat. And then in here you have different, so if the children are looking at it, you can actually tap children. And for the teachers, I have that uh, illuminated right now, but you can actually turn different effects on. So here's the rain, raining on the poor giraffe. Um, you have snow for different uh, biomes that you're talking about. And then you can actually take pictures and take video with this. So here's actually some of the, um, so the bigger the target, the bigger the animal, which is great. So this is actually in my uh, university class. So I have this picture of all my students. I had the target. It was about three feet by three. Um, so you can see how large it is. Then we did a TV show actually was filmed at our school. So we did a, one about rhinos. So we had the film crew pretend to, to shoot right in our school. Um, I had a little panda on my keyboard there. And then this is the one where I took the target away, and it's right in the student's hand. It's really great. It's re um, the kids love it. And uh, as you can see, even the older kids love it too. So that's called Zoo Kazam. Uh, there's plenty of uh, animals to choose from. They even have dinosaurs now, and now they have mystery pets. Uh, so you name it, it's there for the kids. It's great. So another one I'm going to share uh, for older is uh, it's called Elements 4D. So normally you would have a cube. You can print them out on the website. You would have a cube that's um, set up to with all the elements of the periodic table on each side. I cheated and I just grabbed um, just one side. So what you do is hover over it, and that's hydrogen. Obviously, you're not going to see anything because it's gas. Um, but then I also have oxygen here. So there's hydrogen and oxygen, but when you put them together, it's what? Water. So when you tap them together, you'll see in, in the cube there's the water. Um, so when you tap two cubes of a periodic table together, it'll form the elements right there and give you all the information that you need. Um, so that's called Elements 4D. And you can go right to their website to grab the cubes for that to print them out. And my last one that I wanted to share is called, um, it's by a company called Daiquiri. It's called uh, Anatomy 4D, definitely for the older crew. So you get the target here. Um, and then when you put it over, you get the human body. Um, and what's interesting about this is actually that you can actually turn different systems of the body off. So I can, if I wanted to just see the skeletal system, I could really like, zoom in and talk about the different bones. Uh, you can really get in there, really get in and um, talk about the different aspects of that. And then you can actually just turn it around. Um, it's really interactive. So you can see you can really get a good view in there. Um, and it's actually really good for my college students because when I show it to them, uh, we have physical therapy majors and we have um, you know occupational therapy. They really need to learn the different systems. So this has actually been a real hit with them as well. Um, so all the apps that I've showed you except for Zoo Kazam are free. So Zoo Kazam is only 99 cents on the App Store. Um, so go ahead and take a look. I know uh, if you have any questions, just shoot me a, a message on Twitter and I'd be happy to help you out.
Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much, Carl. Yeah, I, I, I love um, augmented reality. I, I share an awful lot about it um, on some of the sort of PD sessions that I organise and, and uh, I'm involved with. Yeah. Um, it, it's so amazing. Uh, something that I like to do is sort of get screenshots while you're using it and then sort yeah. of move those photos into other apps like, I don't know, Yakit Kids or Chatterpix or whatever and bring them to life so the kids can then sort of explain what they've learned about the different animals and or you know, the human body or whatever it is, you know, whatever sort of thing you're using. So Yeah, as you can see from those pictures, I mean, it doesn't matter the age, it, everybody loves it, and it's great, you know, you take uh, one of the targets with you, you put it in your pocket, you know, it's a great bar trick too. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a great one, called, uh, speaking of that sort of thing, called Heart Cam, have you seen that? No, I haven't. Yeah, search for Heart Cam, all one word, print the marker off, okay. and sort of stick it on your chest, and uh, it, it sort of creates a crater on, on your chest, you can see the heart beating inside, it's really Oh, cool. nice. <laughs> I'll have to try that one out. Cool, brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Carl. Yeah. I'm going to hand thank over to. Thank you very much. Um, so, Carl and um, K Calder W uh, on Twitter. If you search on the hashtag AppShare Live, you can find Kyle uh, quite easily through that. Thank you ever so much, Kyle. So now over to Alistair. Alistair, are you ready? Uh, yep, absolutely. Um, brilliant. I'll just share my screen here. Okay, so your six minutes start now. Great. So um, I'm going to talk about an app today uh, called Huddle Technique. Um, it used to be called Ubersense, but they've changed the name recently. Um, so it's an app kind of primarily designed for kind of uh, sports team coaches and PE teachers. I'm not a PE teacher, but in my previous school, uh, class teachers had to deliver a bit of um, PE, and I found this like absolutely transformed my lessons. Um, so basically, it's a video analysis app. Um, and the kind of the flow that I like to use when when using this app is to kind of start off with the students kind of um, creating a success criteria, and I've done that from watching like elite athletes perform a particular skill on YouTube, or by getting my mate who's a PE teacher to demonstrate it and have a look at it. Uh, then the students would have a go at practicing it, filming each other. Uh, and then they get an instant review on the iPad where they can play it back in slow motion, watch it back frame by frame, uh, and really get kind of excellent feedback. Um, so today I'm just going to have a look at a, a basketball example. So this is like a really, really simple um, success criteria that uh, we use at our school for basketball. So uh, the acronym is BEEF, so you need your balance, your elbow needs to be pointing towards the basket at 90 degrees, your eyes need to be fixed on the rim and you need to follow through after your shot. And there's some key uh, vocabulary that we would try and get the kids to use at the bottom there as well. So if I just switch over to my iPad here, uh, I'll open up a uh, huddle technique here. Okay, so uh, in the app you, you have uh, videos and you can film them in the app by pressing record or you can um, drop other videos that you've already uh, filmed from your camera roll straight in here. So I've got three examples of a basketball shot here, uh, the PE teacher. So this is what he was like before I, I worked with him. Uh, so if we play this, uh, you can choose in the bottom left-hand corner the, the speed to which you would like to play it back. So we'll just go for full speed first time. Okay, so not a great effort. Uh, so we can go down to a quarter speed and you can use the wheel at the bottom to move the video image frame by frame, so where it's all about the preparation. So we can start off by uh, zooming in and having a look. Uh, so does he have a good balanced stance? It looks reasonably balanced, but there's not much of a bend in his knees there, so he's not going to get much power in his shot. Uh, if we have a look at his elbows, uh, both of his elbows are behind his hands, which is poor technique, uh, and he's he's using two hands to flip the ball up. His eyes are fixed on the basket, as we can see. I'll just zoom out a little bit. And you can actually um, annotate on the video as well. So I'll just add an arrow here. So yeah, you can see he is fixed straight on the basket. But it's basically a poor, poor technique. Okay. Uh, so then if we compare that to the perfect shot, and we can just play that back here. Again, I'll just go for full speed. And this was after I gave him a few tips. Okay, so basically the perfect shot. Okay, so again, what I would get the students to do is continually refer to the success criteria and go through their own uh, technique or a partner's technique and really kind of analyze it in depth. So yeah, again, if we look, we can zoom right in, have a look at his knees. They're really bent, so there's going to be lots of power. We can just highlight that. So that's excellent kind of pre-performance routine. 
to move it forward a little bit. You can see he's really steadied himself. His elbow is almost at exactly 90 degrees. If I just use my protractor, which is built into the app. So, oh, it's at 75 degrees there, so maybe uh, he still has a bit of work to do. And we can zoom out and see the rest of the shot. And as you can see, it's an absolutely perfect shot. And I think he was posing about the end here because he keeps his uh, his swan neck follow through for about five minutes and then walks with great satisfaction to the basket. Okay, so that's what I would kind of do in, in the lesson with the app. Um, I'll just switch back. Is my, can you see me now? There we go. Yeah, you're back. I'm back. Sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's how I would use it in the lessons. So the students are just really quickly kind of analysing each other and giving each other really high quality feedback based on the success criteria. And like P is really important, um, but. I have to say, I think the kind of greater benefit of this is the kind of metacognition. They're really analysing their learning. They can see instant results from feedback, and every time I've used it, it's been really, really successful. Um, another kind of feature of the I think that's a really good kind of reflection app is you can record uh, all towards Africa, a 60 second video analysing their technique and highlight a kind of action plan to improve their performance. So, uh, like I say, I'm not a PE teacher, so I'm not a complete expert, but I think anybody can use it, uh, and it's, it's a great tool. Brilliant, Stefan. You've got 30 seconds to spare. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much, Alistair. Thank you for that. Uh, anyone got any questions about Huddle at all for Alistair? No? Okay, cool. So, brilliant. So, thank you very much indeed for sharing that. I've seen a few tweets talking about what you've been sharing and things as well, so awesome stuff. Uh, right, so uh, next up then we have uh, Pamela. So, Pamela, over to you. Are you ready to present? Yes, I think so. I'm just going to yes. screen share. Present to everyone. Cool. So, uh, your six minutes then start now. Thank you. Have you got me? Yep, there's your iPad. Okay, you there? Hey, Pamela? Hello. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now, cool. Okay, I had headphones in, so I think that was the problem. And can you see my screen? You can see your iPad, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we are going to be doing a big thing in school this term all about animation and stop motion animation, different types of animation and I find a really nice simple app to kind of start the ball rolling with that. It's called Goldie Blocks and the Movie Machine. You can see it here on my iPad. Now you can print, you can buy a a little bit to go with it but we're not using that in school and for what we're using it for you don't need it but if you wanted to print out all the little cells that you make and put them into the um, the movie machine and show your movies that way you could do it but if I open up the app you've got options to make, learn or watch some sample ones so I'm going to go into make and basically it lets you make your own little they're sort of like flip books so you can choose your own background, um, you can add from your camera, you can take photos just of your classroom or around the school, and I'm going to go for this one. Um, whenever you open it up, all your media is there, which I really like because if you're learning a new concept, and the concept that I wanted our kids to get was that you move it a little tiny bit each time, um, you don't want to have them sitting for ages trying to draw things. So there is the option to draw, You've got different colours that you can choose from. But what I really like are the little stickers. So I'm going to choose a sticker of the rocket. And along the bottom, you've got all your frames. So you start off with one, you start off with two, and you can put it in, and then you can copy that to the next one if you don't want it to move at all. And that's the, the little button underneath where my rocket is on the right hand side. So if I wanted to duplicate that, I could. Now, it gives you lots of encouragement as you go through, so there are lots of little confetti animations that go over the top of it, um, which I'm not a fan of, but our digital leaders, whenever they were trying this out, really loved. Um, so I suppose that's maybe an age thing. <laughs> um, or you can tap the plus. You get a maximum, I think, of 12 frames. 
that you can work with. Um, so if I just quickly add a rocket in, um, you can resize things. There's another confetti. Um, you can resize things as well. You can change their angle. Um, and I like the way you've got the, the onion skin so you can see where it was beforehand. It um, makes it really easy. Now I use this with kids from our P4s and up. So they were maybe nine. So I started it off with our nine-year-olds and they really loved it. Um, and almost done. So more confetti. But there are a lot of little stickers. You can add your own things in. You know, if you wanted to draw a little planet, you could. There's a rubber, and then you can take screenshots as well. And then, whenever you're done, you just tap play at the bottom, and it'll play it for you. So it's a really simple way to introduce animation um, and to give them the idea of you move it a little tiny bit each time. So I see this as kind of a first step before stop motion so that they can go in then and edit, they can change things around, they can add things in, and it's all very easy, and they can save it um, as an animation. So I'll show you some of the ones that our, um, our digital leaders did. So this one was done by one of our P4s, so he's nine. And it just continuously loops, which is really nice. And then this was done by one of our P7s, so she's 10, 11. You can see she's got a few things going on there. And she's used different stickers of the bird, one with wings open, one with wings closed. But then if you go into the watch... You can see ones that other people have made and you can talk about what's good about them, what you would change um, and learn their little tutorials so you can draw your own things as well as use the stickers. Um, and there's some nice wee examples on it. I just thought it was a really nice introduction for something that's quite a hard concept to do on a computer and a time consuming concept to do on paper so the iPad really just brings it to life. Um, Cool, we've got one minute left. Yeah, that's me done. I thought we'd be here about that. Does it, does it cost any money to purchase this? Ad? No, it's free. The only thing that you would have to pay for is if you want to buy the printout thing. Um, the downside of it is, at the moment, you can only export it as an animated GIF. Right, okay. I haven't found a way that you can save it to your camera roll. You can save the individual frames to your camera roll, um, but if you want to kind of use it with app smashing, you can't really do that, which is a downside. Um, yeah. But apart from that, it's it's really good, and you can email the animated gifts as well. So if you wanted to share it with parents, you could do it that way. You could also maybe if you sort of mirror it using Air Server, record your screen, or record it using sort of yeah. QuickTime or something that way. Do it that way instead. Yeah. As a sort of a means of getting it, getting it off the off the device. But that's brilliant. Thank you very much, Pamela. Thank you. Oh. Okay, so uh, next up is uh, Rachel. Rachel, are you ready? Uh, yeah, hang on. I'll just uh, share my screen one sec. And so I present to everyone. So you should be being seen by everyone. Uh, so your six minutes start when we see your screen. Got that? Got you. Hang on. Uh, so while Rachel's just getting that up, uh, just uh, heard on Twitter, we're trending uh, on Twitter on the hashtag AppShareLive, which isn't bad for a Saturday morning. Um, so, yeah, not too bad at all. Uh, how are you getting on there, Rachel? All right? Um, yeah, I don't see why you can't see me. Oh, we can see you fine. You can see me, but you can't see my screen? Nope. Okay. What I'll do to save on time, um, Sam, are you ready to share? Jump to you instead first. Yeah, yeah. I have. Um, unfortunately, I had a few technical difficulties this morning, so I couldn't get a presentation to load through the thing. But I've got some props okay, to sure. show. So I'll jump over um, to uh, Sam, Rachel, and then we'll come back to you in a second. Oh, I've done it. I think. Oh. Is that me? Can you see me? I can see your iPad now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
right, okay. We'll, okay, we'll stick with Rachel then since she's on there now. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Come to your next sound. Cheers. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Um, I was going to do a little, I suppose it's less wow and um, more learning-y, I suppose. Um, I, I'm really in the middle of a um, revision with Year 11 at the moment, so what I thought I'd do is I'd have a quick look at um, some of the facilities that explain everything allow you to, to do, and some of them are dead simple, and they're great for metacognition and being able to show um, students maybe how to answer an exam question or um, for students to be able to talk about how they answered an exam question. So um, I'll go back to my mail because I'll go back to, um, I'll go to Explain Everything first of all, actually, I think. Um, and one of the things that you can do in Explain Everything is that you can import a web browser. So um, if you just saw that, you just press Add, and one of the options is Web Browser. And what you can do is you can actually bring the web browser into Explain Everything. So I'll just get the URL for this exam paper. Oops. It will paste, I promise you. And your exam paper comes straight in to explain everything. And you can scroll through that paper, and the kids can, you or the kids can annotate, draw on it, do whatever they like with it. Um, and you can talk through how to answer a question or you can talk through some of the misconceptions that the students had when they did the exam paper. Moreover than that, you can, you can record yourself whilst you're going through this in class, and then you could share that recording with your students through your VLE or Google Classroom or whatever it is that you have. Um, also, one of the things that you can get your students to do is you can get them to talk through how they answered the question, and they can share that with you, and you can get some idea of how they're viewing an exam question, you can see them sort of their thought processes as they go through an exam question. So it works really well both ways. The other thing that you can do, so that's um, introducing the, the web browser thing through um, Explain Everything. The other thing that you could do is you can, just not save that, is that you can, I use Socrative quite a lot in, in, in lessons to try and um, encourage kids to do certain aspects of an exam. So my, my students really sometimes don't read the question properly or really sometimes don't read a certain aspect of the exam um, properly. So what you can do is you can email your Socrative report to yourself. Can you um, just explain what Socrative is, uh, Rachel, please? Uh, Socrative is um, uh, another app, and actually it's a web tool as well, which um, you can make quizzes on. Um, and the students can, they can be self-guided quizzes um, and the kids can work through the quiz and at the end of the quiz you get a, a results table showing you which kid answered which question correctly or not. Like you can see on the screen now because this is a report from Socrative um, and I've just sent that to my, my email and I've just imported it into um, Explain Everything. And once again we can look at, we can zoom into certain questions and say, okay, this is the question, the question's at the top in blue, and you can say, okay, you know, well done, loads of you got it right, but why did some of you not get it right? Let's look at some of the phrases in there, and, and in particular, actually, I'll just annotate this, in particular, this ne jamais thing is a thing that the kids always get wrong, and it's the reason why I put it in the, in the question, um, because they never pick it up, and that's the reason, actually, I, I've already done this one with my, my class, so I, I know that these kids that didn't get the answer right, it is because they didn't pick up ne jamais. And so you can go on, you can, um, you know, go through, oops, you can go through um, all your diff different questions in that way. And it's just really, um, it's really useful just to, break down an exam question, which some kids find very, very hard to see a massive exam question and have to go through, you know, to, to see it as a, a really big thing that they've got to overcome. And it's, it's good to be able to break it down into small pieces and talk them through it. But the really transformative thing is that if you record it and then share that recording back with them, they've got that as a reference for their revision, you know, when they're by themselves and they're not in the classroom. So it's taking all that learning that you've done in the classroom and having it at home as well. Yeah. And that's it. Awesome. Um, so it, when, when you've gone through that, can you just, because you, you, you've got a bit of time left, um, for people who don't know, once you've made a little video, how, how would you then share that with the class? I share mine with, um, through Google Classroom. 
So can you just run through that workflow quickly? Would that be all right? Uh, yep. Do you want me to... So if I just create this little video here and imagine we're talking about this and we've done some... Oops. We've done some animation. We've sort of done that. We've highlighted stuff. Um, and I can stop recording. And then I actually just share it into my photo like this. So that's going straight, straight to your camera roll, is it? Straight to my camera roll is that. And then I um, import that into um, my Google Classroom, which I will do in a second. Do you, do you not use the um, Google Drive option to and save it straight I to your camera sometimes, roll? But sometimes I find it crashes. Right, OK. And so actually, I just find this a smoother way of doing it. Um, so the kids sometimes try and put it in through Google Drive, and it actually just all falls apart at the point where you're going to try and put it into Classroom. Um, I don't know why that is, um, and we've always found this to be a more reliable method. Um, and you know, when you've not got a lot, of, you've only got 50 minutes of a lesson. Yeah, yeah, you've got to make it work, haven't you? But you've got to absolutely have it nailed. So um, that's why we kind of do it this way. Um, and that's some interesting feedback for uh, explaining everything there, then, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it is actually. Maybe Rashan's watching. Maybe. <laughs> um, and so I don't know. I'll just I'll put this in Year 11s. They'll wonder what on earth is going on, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is my uh, Google Classroom for Year 11. I make an announcement. I'm going to stick an attachment in. Use that. It slowly loads up. Awesome. And you can just put a little message to them. This is the video from lesson the other day. Take a and then, you, then that's it. You've done it. And yeah, so, yeah. awesome. You spent not only have you spent twenty minutes in class explaining how to go through an, uh, an exam question, but then it becomes really, really valuable because, of course, you've then got a recording of that, which they can then go back and review when they're at home. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rachel. Uh, sort of uh, talking the talk and walking the walk. There, brilliant stuff. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Okay, so over to Sam now um, with his props. Are you uh, ready, Sam? Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, Brilliant. So yeah, as I said, um, not got a presentation, but any of the bits that I um, talk about have got longer talk-throughs on YouTube, recordings and videos, and they have the kind of presentation bit that goes with it. Okay. Um, the first one I want to talk about is Plickers, um, and Plickers is great because it allows you to find out what the pupils know after you've taught them. Um, it gives you some immediate feedback so you know on strengths and weaknesses. And the best thing of all for me is that it doesn't require the pupils to have a device. They don't need to have a phone. They don't need to be connected to the internet. Um, what they do need is they get a little card. Their card has, as you can see, a B, a C, and a D. Um, it's a multiple choice question that appears on the board. They, depend on what answer they want to give, hold it up. So if they want to give A, hold it up like that. And with my device in my phone and my iPad, so I'll scan cards in the room and the app picks up what results um, they've given. Um, each card they have is individualized to each pupil so you have to load your class in first um, and my set goes up to 40 even though it gives me about 10 spare. Um, but it's great because it's a bit different, the kids get really into it. Um, doesn't mean you have to produce lots of multiple choice quizzes if you want to keep using it but the, um, the data the feedback you get from the app, you know, sometimes it'll say, yeah, 100% got it right, then you move on. Sometimes when 10% got it right, then you know straight away that you need to recap that info. Um, the app now um, exports the data as well, so you can keep track of how pupils are doing across time rather than just um, in that lesson. The, old, the first version of the app, it told you the information there and then, and then that information went. Now you've actually got a record, which is great. Um, yeah, um, the versions that I put out are huge A4 ones, but um, you can easily just get A5 ones. The pupils put it in the inside cover of their book, then you don't need to worry about handing the cards out every time you want to use it. Um, but no, I find it really useful um, for them getting feedback and for you knowing whether you've actually taught what you thought rather than kind of write what you've learned on a post it, I'll check later kind of 
thing, they get the immediate feedback, which is what they need. Um, the other app that uh, I use, um, use it mainly with uh, year seven and eight, but there's absolutely no reason why you can't use it all the way through to year 13. And that's called Edpuzzle. It's very similar to apps like uh, Zaption. Uh, what I like about Edpuzzle is that it's free. Plinkers is also free, you don't have to pay for that app. Um, with Edpuzzle, you go on the, um, I always use it on the web browser first to build it, but pupils can access it on apps or in the web browser. And with that, you can load a video from YouTube, Khan Academy, TED Talks, pretty much anything that has a video um, on it. And you load the video in, and then instead of the pupils just watching a video and you knowing that they've watched a video or not, you can embed questions into parts of the video. So you've put a question in after one minute, you ask them on some content, they can't move on until they've answered that question. So it ensures that you're not just at home work prior saying, go home, watch this video, then we'll use that information. Because if they don't watch it, then come the lesson, you've got to kind of backtrack a bit, uh, you know that they've watched it. Um, and you're kind of testing their knowledge as they go along. It's very short term because I've only just seen some information then they're pretty much being asked a question on it. But at least you know they're not just passively sitting there streaming it on um, one thing but then doing something else on a different uh, browser page. So um, it makes it a bit more engaging. Um, because it's a kind of quiz test element through it, um, some get fairly competitive. They want to know how they're doing week in, week out. and um, it does get to a point where some of them are like, oh, we've not got any more of those videos to do. So I think I find it really engaging. The people's test find it a really engaging um, thing to do. And you know they've actually kind of watched some things. Great for the kind of flip learning model they've learned something before coming to the lesson. So, um, yeah, both, both for both of those, Plickers and Edpuzzle, uh, both free to use. And as I said, um, if you follow me on Twitter, you can get the links for my YouTube videos where I've gone through a bit more in depth and have the kind of presentation. Thanks. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Thank you, Sam. One of the things I lo love about Edpuzzle is the uh, sort of superpowers that you can use uh, to make sure that the kids can sort of skip through the video and all that sort of thing. Have you seen that? Hi, Sam. Thanks. Okay, okay, brilliant. Thank you so much, Sam. Uh, so, uh, we'll just pass over to uh, Steve now. Thank you very much, uh, Sam. Steve, you ready? Yes. Brilliant stuff. Okay, over to you then. Your six minutes starts now. Okay, have you got me? Yep. Yep. Okay, awesome. All right, so... Um, I think it was on the last actually live that somebody shared pixel press floors, which is something I used last year with year five, um, and then was contacted by pixel press to ask if I'd be interested in backing their Kickstarter release of something called Bloxels, um, which I ended up doing and got hold of five kits. Uh, so Bloxels, the kits contains, as you can see, a 250 blocks and a 13 by 13 game board. Um, but the misconception is that you have to have the boards to actually use the app. Uh, you don't. As I say, I only had five kits, which uh, in a class of uh, 22 kids, I was using it. I used to uh, use it originally with year four. Um, that's not obviously enough kits to go around. So I ended up just using the the balls um, with the with the SEN kids. So it was it was more kinesthetic and more hands on for them. But most of the kids work directly into the app, which is free and essentially is an absolutely amazing tool for game design and um, as a precursor to some of the uh, integral skills for coding, especially debugging. Um, you can see some examples here from the, the work that I was doing with the kids. It was a, they were doing a project on Great Britain, and you can see some awesome character designs that they that they put together for their Great Britain themed games and level designs as well. Um, and what I'm going to attempt to do with the roughly five minutes I've got left is try and put an entire game together. Uh, Mark, just holler at me if I'm massively going over. No worries. So, okay. So here we go. Um, what I found with uh, when we first started using Bloxels is that it can be a little bit overwhelming to the kids. There's, there's a lot of options. There's a lot more that you can do with it than just build the levels. You can actually build the levels. You can build animations, backgrounds, characters, all kinds. We're going to start with the levels. 
So when you come into the levels, uh, for the levels, the cubes or the colored blocks each uh, represent something. So for example here, the green ones represent floor. It doesn't mean that they have to be green, but it does mean that they are floor. Orange ones are destructible blocks, red ones are uh, things like lava that you can't get past, I put a smattering of coins or collectibles. Again, it doesn't have to be coins. And I'm actually going to build a little path going up here. So there's three parts to the level design. Uh, if you look at the bottom of the, the screen, you can see that I'm on the layout tab. I'm going to put a little white block up here. The white blocks can be checkpoints. We can actually build in parts of story if you wanted to link it to literacy uh, and a couple of enemies which are purple. So that's the, that's the basic layout of this room done. Um, this is 13 by 13 room. If I press the little blue button, uh, it takes me to the, the map of the actual whole game. So that's just one room within a 13 by 13 grid. So you can actually have 169 rooms within one game. Um, so as you can imagine, it can get pretty huge. Coming along the bottom, there's, there's two other tabs. And, and as I say, this is one of the things that some of the kids were getting confused by, the, this three-step process to build in the levels. So that's the layout done using the, uh, the key to the different blocks. I'm now going to go to configure. Some of the blocks can be configured. So the purple blocks, I can configure what type of enemies I want. So a sentry will shoot at me, whereas a flyer will fly around. And I can configure this checkpoint to say, uh, well done, keep going, or something similar. And if I wanted to, I could make it the end flag. Let's just leave it like that for now. Now I've got some other sub tabs that I've opened along the bottom. So I can choose my character here. Now I've got a horrible feeling I'm not going to have time to design a character live, so I'm going to just choose the, the one of myself that I've made previously. And I can put him anywhere I want to start. Next along I can choose the music, uh, which I've got turned off right now, so I won't worry about that. And then if you wanted to dig further into it, there's something called the code board, which actually allows you to start customizing the, the rules that, are, that underpin the actual game itself. So that's the, the layout for the level done, and that's the configure for the level done. I'm now going to go into decorate, um, and at this point I can decide what everything looks like. So, as I say, these, these um, yellow ones, they, they could be coins, but they don't have to be. It could be that I'm collecting hearts. Um, the floor could be hearts if I wanted it to. It could just as easily look more like floor. And every single aspect of this can be personalized and designed by you. So you can go in and you can create a board and make it look however you want, and that can become your, uh, your power-ups, it can become your baddies, it can become anything you like. So again, this uh, red stuff down here, it doesn't have to be lava, I could design something myself, or I could just actually make it water. And all of these blocks that you're seeing here are the ones that come already pre-made for you in the app, just to give you a little head start. I'm going to put this weird little guy in to be my enemies and I need something up the top. Now those orange blocks I put in, they're uh, destructible blocks. I actually didn't do much with them myself when I learned how, to use the, uh, learned how to use the app, but the kids were doing some crazy good stuff where they're building destructible towers. Um, they were building Big Ben, going back to the fact that it was a, a Great Britain challenge, they were building Big Ben, and you had to shoot your way through Big Ben to get to the other side. Um, back down the bottom you can see I've also got two other little tabs that I've opened up, so I've got my my background, so I can put in uh, one of the pre-designed backgrounds, or again, I can go and design my own. I've got this Egyptian-y themed one here. Let's just leave that in. And you've actually got the mid uh, mid background too, which you can use to create uh, depth and also like create like cave effects. So there we go. So I'm going to press play and jump straight into my game. Now, what I've realised is that I can't actually. I can't actually get up there, so this is where the debugging comes in. I'm going to jump back to layout, and I'm going to have to adjust my design so that it's more possible. I might grab the rubber and make these two disappear. So I've got to make that jump and then continue on my way up. Let's jump straight back in. I'm going to shoot through these ones and shoot this guy. I love the fact that you can design absolutely every aspect of it because it does allow you to create these cross-curricular activities, uh, cross-curricular games that, that can relate to, to stories that you're reading or relate to something that you're studying in history or geography. Uh, Mark, how am I doing for time? Can I do characters as well? You've run out, mate. Okay, there we go. See, that's all right. No worries. 
Um, what I would say is that if you jump on the, uh, if you Google Block Tools, you'll find uh, they've got some excellent tutorial guides for every aspect of this um, that are well worth watching if you're planning and using it in the classroom. I definitely recommend watching all the tutorials first. Thanks, Mark. Cheers. Thanks, Steve. Uh, just uh, so people know, how much does the app cost? Uh, yeah, the app is free. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. many opportunities. But um, you know, I, I could see even you know, introduction to some elements of the A-level computing um, courses, uh, you know, syllabuses that are available. Finding this massively relevant. Um, it was Chris Copeman, another ADE, who talked about this last time, and and the potential w w with this is just absolutely huge. There's so many um, variables, opportunities, um, you know, and, and great learning opportunities within it. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So. Thank you very much for sharing it uh, with us today. That's awesome, Steve. Thank you. No worries. Cool. So that's uh, Steve done. So that just leaves me to uh, finish off. So I'm just going to uh, jump on here. Uh, Rachel or Steve, could you just time me uh, six minutes starting from about now? Do you think you could do that for me? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so I'll just go to present to everyone and go on to screen share and entire screen and uh, share. And can you just confirm, can you see my iPad? Yep. Awesome. So look, I'm going to go through three apps very, very quickly, really. Um, these are tools to help you in the classroom with some of the resources that you might make. Uh, some of your children might find uh, some of these useful as well, perhaps for lots of different reasons. But I'm going to start with a free app um, called Office Lens. And what Office Lens does, if you load apps, uh, children often with their mobile devices want to uh, sort of take a picture of the uh, whiteboard and what have you. Well, can you see when you hover over the top there, it picks out the edges. And you simply just uh, press the uh, camera button. It processes it and it crops it down and leaves you with a brilliant uh, sort of cropped image there, which you can then save to add into your notes and so forth and so on. If you're in Office 365 School and when you tap Done, you can see you can drop it straight into OneNote, OneDrive, Word, PowerPoint, so forth and so on. So uh, really, really helpful there um, for teachers and uh, children alike. Uh, I often uh, want to get children sort of thinking at the beginning of a lesson um, and what have you. So I like to create um, sort, of, uh, sort of thunks, as it were, for um, children to uh, think about uh, at the start of a lesson. So uh, the Legend app, uh, which isn't free, the Office Lens app is free. This is uh, paid for. I think it might be £1.49. Uh, but you type in your quotes. So let's put every uh, day is a learning day, for example, and I hit uh, next. And then what it presents you with uh, are lots of different uh, little animated um, sequences. Uh, you've got three options on the bottom, one, two, and then they come through, and three. And you find one that you like, uh, so let's say I like uh, this one here in the top left. Uh, you just select it, you can choose different colours for it to work with, and then you can um, export that in lots of different ways as well. So that's uh, Legend, and uh, I really like that. It's super simple to use, and you can create some fantastic things with it. The final app, uh, which is also free, um, is uh, Adobe Post, and you can create some fantastic uh, images with this. And so to do that, you simply go to the plus button. Uh, you do need an Adobe account to do this, but um, if you're already using things like Adobe Voice or Adobe Post in your classroom, uh, then uh, this will work uh, brilliantly for you. And so you can simply tap on the plus icon here. We can bring photos through from our camera roll, and uh, we can search for free photos that are royalty free as well. So I'll just search for free photos. And uh, you, you get given a bunch of them anyway, uh, as you can see. Uh, I'll just search um, for, let's say, uh, code, uh, seeing as we're just thinking about block source, we'll do that, uh, and uh, find uh, an image you might want to use. I'm, why it's bringing up loads of zips, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'll go for, uh, let's just say, the uh, alphabet spaghetti, like so. And uh, once you've done that, uh, you can then optimize your... Um, uh, your image uh, to certain social media, but actually, if you're going to be using it in a presentation, um, then it's dead simple. Often you'll be four by three or sixteen by nine in uh, your presentation tool. Um, again, you could use this for banners on your door. You could use it to go on to uh, questioning cubes, all sorts of stuff. Um, but I'm just going to um, put it onto my coding um, presentation, which is sixteen by nine. So I'll just do sixteen by nine. I can move the image around. Okay, I'll hit continue, and then I'm just going to double tap where the text is, and I'll just say try uh, Bloxels uh, for learning code. Okay, 
not Bluzels, uh, but Bluxels. Let's just change that there. Hit done. And then you can resize using the handles and what have you. My favorite thing, there's a few favorite things actually, but if you go to shape, you can apply uh, different shapes uh, around the outside of your link to your uh, image there. I'm just going to go for a little banner like. So you might recognize the AppShare Live icon actually uh, from this is what I use to do that. And so I'll, I'll just pop that there like so. Uh, so to the section called color, okay, it recognizes the colors and uh, it's the pairs that I really like because it will then just sort of give you pairs of colors that will work with the colors you can see in the background from the photo you've got already. So um, very simply, I'll choose that one there, tick that. I'm just going to change my alignment like so. I'll choose a different font in it just to show you that there's lots of different fonts there. Uh, let's just choose, that um, doesn't really matter really, I'll choose that one there for now. Uh, and I hit the tick, and then you can share that. You can change spacing and uh, opacity if you want to as well, uh, so you can see what's going on behind the image and things like that. And when you're finished, um, you can just uh, tap onto the share icon in the top right-hand corner and save it to your camera roll and what have you. But I will just point out, if you want to, you can add more text. So if I wanted to uh, put some more information down here, I can just do that, and I can do that. And then I can apply lots of different techniques uh, to the extra text that's gone on there as well. Okay, and if you don't like something, uh, you can just bin it and delete that. The final thing I'll show you is uh, there's a little spinning wheel down the very, very bottom, the third icon across from the left. If you press that, you can actually just, as it's showing you, spin around to explore different styles. So you can just keep going around until you find something different that you might like. So let's say I like this one here. And then you just, just apply that alternative uh, option instead. So that um, is me done. Three apps to help you create lots of different things in your classroom. And an app to help children sort of get screenshots from your board as well. Office Lens, which is free. Adobe Post, which is also free. And the Legend app, which will cost you, I think, about say, £1.49. I hope you found those uh, tools uh, useful. I'll just stop my screen sharing and uh, I'll come back to you. Okay, so uh, I hope you found uh, that useful. Uh, a whistle stop of uh, AppShare live today. Uh, so much shared. Uh, if you could just uh, unmute your microphones for a second, guys. So just say a massive thank you to Alistair and to Kyle um, and to Pamela and to Rachel and to Sam and to Steve. Uh, a massive international uh, presence here today on AppShare Live. And I know, having looked on Twitter, there's been lots of uh, great tweets, people really enjoying the ideas that you've shared. So just leads me to say thank you so much to all of you for coming along. I hope you found it uh, worthwhile. Thank you to those of you who've been watching. Uh, as well. Um, if you are interested in sharing yourself on AppShare Live, uh, the next AppShare Live will be taking place um, in May, and we do just the one uh, a month, and uh, it will be May the 21st at 10 a.m. So uh, if you'd like to get involved in that, watch out on the hashtag, uh, or look out on my blog uh, where there'll be a sign-up form. If you'd like to get involved, just let me know. Uh, thank you very much again to everybody who's joined us, and uh, anything anybody wants to say before we go today? I just want to say I, I learned quite a bit myself, so I want to thank all of you. Um, I love the Bloxels. I'm, I'm ready to order myself, actually. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Thank you, Kyle. All right, then. So um, thank you so much, and uh, thank you again for watching. I'll see you uh, next month. That will be May the 21st, uh, again at uh, 10 o'clock uh, British summertime. Okay, and it is looking as sunny-ish in the moment. Uh, is it light with you yet, Kyle? <laughs> uh, not quite. Not quite nearly. <coughs> okay, well, thanks everybody, and uh, I'll catch you again soon. Cheers. Thank you, bye. Bye. Okay. bye.